Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today I'm going to talk about something I get asked about quite a bit. It's about the router bits and the bits that I'm going through. Now, without getting in great depth about router bits, I mean, there's only two that I'm really using right now, maybe three. I'm using a end mule, a uh, V bit, and a straight bit. And I'll, I'll show you those three because those are the three that I'm really using a lot. And there are others that are used for more graphic stuff, uh, 3D stuff, that I am going to get into down the road, but I'm trying to build to it slowly. I mean, I'm still fairly new to CNC, so I'm trying to get there slowly and do it right instead of just jumping into it and figuring out I'm doing something completely wrong. So. The other thing I'm going to do after this video is I am going to release two videos today. I'm going to release one that is something my wife wanted me to make her for Christmas so she could put it on display in her store. And sad news, it has no CNC in it. But I videoed it and it came out pretty neat, so I thought I'd go ahead and show it to y'all. So anyway, I'm going to get back over here to the bits and I'll show you what we've been using. Okay, so the, the main bits you all usually see me using or a 90 degree V-bit, which is that right there. That's one that I do a lot of the graphics with. The other one is a 60 degree V-bit, which simply means it just comes to a sharper point, it, it comes down more narrow, and will do the real precise stuff for me. And to answer your question about it, I've got four. These are, I've got three half inch, 90 degree and one 60 degree. I'm going to buy another 60 degree. To answer your question about these, no, I don't go through just a ton of these. I have this many because I sharpen them. And I'm going to show you how I do that here in just a second. The other thing I do use a lot of is called an end mill. Whenever you see me cutting a, something out, doing the outside profile cut, or doing a pocket cut where I'm cutting down, and like this right here, it would go down and just empty out, hollow out the area. That is done with an end mill. And sometimes I'll do it with a small end mill, which this is a 1 8 Also have a 1 quarter inch for larger areas. There are various types of end mills. This is a four fluted end mill. I mean, you can see how it's all spiraled and looks like a drill bit, pretty much. That's just your preference on those. And I do not sharpen these. Simply because when I buy these, I buy these in packages of 10, and I do not buy the high-end ones. I just, these cost about $15 a package, and I buy them, and I'll use them four or five times, maybe seven or eight times, depending on what kind of material I'm cutting. And whenever one of these goes dual, I just trash them, get another one. These are cheap enough, it's cost-effective enough for me to uh, just buy new ones and replace them. So unlike the end mills that I buy, I buy these V-bit. Well, these V-bits, this one, for example, is about a $35 to $40 bit. Uh, that one was about a $15, that, and both of these are about $20s. So the V-bits do cost a little bit more, and with them costing that much more, it's more cost-effective since I've already got four of them here. I bought a set of files. These are diamond encrusted files. Unbelievably, they are very cost efficient. I mean, they, I think I paid $11 right under it for this set of three. These are called Easy Lap. I got them off Amazon. And I'll leave you all a link down below if you want to look at them. They're not a real high end file. I mean, the, the filing portion is just the little gray portion here on the end, right there. And it is a stick-on deal. But the thing I have found about these is when I do wear out the file, I just trash it and buy some more. Because, I mean, again, this is kind of like the end mills. By the time I wear one of these out, it has saved me tons of bits. A lot more money in the long run. So these comes in a set of three and a set of five. I bought the set of three because I did not need the coarser grains. This is a, a medium, fine, and super fine. The medium is a 400 grain, the fine is a 600 grain, and the super fine is 1200. Generally, when I'm sharpening these bits, I use the fine and the super fine. Only do I use, I only use the medium whenever something is really torn up. So, when we're doing this, the part that is kind of a misconception to people is right here, you can see 
on this edge, it's got an angle to it. And so people believe you got to get that angle and get down on your uh, material and grind at that angle. That is just exactly opposite. I know it's hard to understand how this works. You flip it over and get on the flat edge of a router bit. Right here's the angle. On the back side is a flat edge, and that flat edge is what you're sharpening down. Because what's happened is this rolled over and is making it, it, it's dulling the front side. This is your cutting edge, but it's this very back edge right here that cuts. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the fine. Okay, so before we get start, started sharpening this, you are going to have to have just a little bit of lubricant. And I found that water works just about as good as anything because we're not going to have to scrub on these or uh, really grind on them a long time. So what we want to do is take a Sharpie and get back here on our flat edge. And you just want to hit the outside of that edge on both sides. So it looks like that. So you've got it sharp. you got a black line around both edges. So what we're going to do is with our bit that has a, our, where we've marked with our Sharpie, we're going to run over here and we're going to dip it in our water just for a little lubricant. And we're going to get our edge, get good and fl uh, flush with your file, get it as flat as you can, and just move it back and forth. And we're not going to press real hard, we're just going to do it a few times, and then we'll flip over and look at it. You can see right there, I'm missing just a little bit down here on this corner and a little bit up top. So we'll run it for just a second more. And we're starting to look pretty good. That edge is getting coming out good. So then the next thing would be, I would go ahead and pull my fine out. Which, like I said, is about a 1200 uh, grit. I'm going to go ahead and dip it again. And again, just the same motion. So I still got to work on the other side. But my edge is coming out real good, nice and smooth through there. I'm going to try to get right there on that corner. And that looks good. You can still see some of the black, but right here on the edge, the black is gone all the way around it. So I'm going to flip it over and grab the other side real quick. And there we go. So I can still do the same with the straight bit. The straight bit has two flutes like that. I would do the same setup. I could sit here and get my straight bit. Well, I've, my angled edge is over here, so I'd flip it over, get on the flat side, and you can sit here and work it down. And then I would go over to my finer grain. So, I mean, that, that's how I do with my, my router bits. That's why I come I'm not going through just a ton. And when I say, yeah, kind of and kind of not, I'm going through a bunch of bits. I go through more end mills than I do uh, V-bits. And I have thrown a couple of V-bits away over the years. But, I mean, whenever I have filed them and filed them and filed them to the point that they're just really getting thin and they're not quite half an inch, because that's my one thing, is whenever I say a half inch V-bit, I can get up here and hold it at a half inch and you can see that thing is a half inch from one edge to the other. So that's, once you start getting, you have filed on it too much and it starts coming down and you're not quite half inch, you're about three eighths, it's time to go ahead and toss that bit because your detail is going to change. You're not going to be quite as wide as it needs to be. So that's my recommendation on v-bits and i do recommend getting some files because it really doesn't take long seriously as long as y'all said me saw me sit there and file on these that's as much filing as going to get done on this i'm not going to get over aggressive with it i'm just trying to keep the edge fairly sharp on it and i'll use it a few more cuts and i'll set it aside and i'll move on to my next one that i've already sharpened and then after i've done it i'll move through them by the time i get through my fourth one 
I'm going to restart sharpening them again. And it doesn't take me 15 minutes to do all of them. So it's worth your while to get these little uh, files for that. Like I said, I'll leave a link down below where you can go get them, look at them, whatever you want to do. And, I mean, they're real neat. And like I said, those things are throw away to me. Whenever they wear out, I just toss them and buy some more. So the other thing I was going to point out, so I did another little video, like I'd said, and it's of a reindeer. My wife wanted it for her storefront. There was no CNC involved. I tried to get CNC involved in it, but uh, I'll let that video talk for itself. I'm going to let it go after a little bit after I let this video go, probably the same day. And uh, I'm just forewarning you now, if y'all don't want to watch it because it has no CNC, I get it. But uh, I just thought I'd let it go since I went ahead and videoed it. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't done, your, done so yet, please subscribe. And I can promise you the next video after the reindeer one, it'll be some CNC stuff. This is just something I wanted to cover because I, I get asked that question a lot. I've got a couple of more, more videos I'm going to work on about questions that I get asked all the time. And I'll try to cover them, and I think one of them is going to be in conjunction with another cut. So, guys, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.